There's something strange and powerful happening under old forgotten wood piles. If you've ever lifted a piece of damp rotting firewood that's been sitting for months, you may have seen it. A white stringy mat crawling across the soil like nature's own webwork. To most people it's just a weird side effect of decay. But to gardeners, especially those battling compacted clay beds, it could be the secret weapon we've all been overlooking. This humble firewood fungus doesn't come in a packet or bottle, yet it rivals expensive mycorrhizal products and soil conditioners. When transplanted carefully into your raised beds it unlocks the soil, breaking up clay, feeding microbes and building dark moist humus in record time. Now here's the kicker, most people are already throwing this stuff away, or worse, burning it. But once you understand how it works, and how to safely collect and reintroduce it to your garden, you'll never look at a rotting log the same way again. In today's guide, we're diving into how this natural fungal inoculant forms what makes it so powerful, and exactly how to harvest and use it to fix even the most stubborn beds, without tilling or buying a thing. So what is the firewood fungus, and why is it so valuable? The white mat you see under decaying logs is actually the visible body of a saprophytic fungus. Unlike mycorrhizal fungi, which partner with living plant roots, these decomposers specialize in breaking down dead organic matter. But here's where it gets interesting. As they digest the wood, they release acids and enzymes that dissolve tightly packed soil particles, especially in clay. That action opens up air channels, improves water infiltration, and creates the perfect conditions for humus formation. Even more importantly, this fungal mat supports a cascade of microbial life. Bacteria, springtails, nematodes, and protozoa begin feeding off the exudates the fungus produces. The soil suddenly goes from sterile and compact to biologically explosive. That surge in life is what turns gray, lifeless clay into dark, crumbly, sponge-like humus. So, how do you find and identify the right fungal mats? Well, you want to look for logs that have been sitting on the ground for months, ideally through at least one rainy season. Oak, mango, eucalyptus, and acacia work well, but honestly, almost any hardwood will do. Look for logs that have been sitting on the ground for months, ideally through at least one rainy season. Oak, mango, eucalyptus, and acacia work well, but almost any hardwood will do. Carefully lift the logs slowly and take a good look at the underside. You're looking for a white to cream-colored mat, or sometimes a thread-like network, right on the soil or on the decayed wood. If it smells earthy, not sour or rotten and seems to hold together like soft cotton, you've likely found a healthy saprophytic fungal colony. Avoid brightly colored molds like green, orange, or black patches. These can indicate less helpful, sometimes toxic molds. The right fungi will look pale, stringy, and almost silky, often spreading outward in a circular pattern on the soil's surface. So let's talk about how to transplant fungal mats into raised beds. The transfer really needs to be done gently, you know, to keep the colony alive. You'll want to use a flat spade or trowel to scoop up not just the fungal mat itself, but also about an inch or two of the soil beneath it. That underlying layer actually contains a lot of crucial microbial life and those important hyphae connections. Make sure to transport it in a shaded container or wrap it in moist paper just to prevent it from drying out. Once the mat is in the raised bed, go ahead and create a shallow trench, no deeper than about 3 inches. Then, just tuck the fungal mat in, almost like you would with a seedling. After that, water it lightly using rainwater or dechlorinated tap water. You actually don't need to cover the mat completely. Letting it touch the surface a bit helps it breathe and spread. Within just a few days, you might start to see these fuzzy white strands reaching out from the buried patch, especially if your bed is rich in leaf litter or mulch. 
that's a really good sign that it's taking hold. Feeding the fungus is key to keeping it alive and helping it spread. To keep this inoculant thriving, you'll need to feed it the right diet. To keep this inoculant thriving, you'll need to feed it the right diet. Forget fertilizers and manure, the firewood fungus wants carbon-rich materials. Layer in partially broken down leaves, soaked cardboard strips, old wood chips, or dried stems. Moisture is, uh, crucial. These fungi die back pretty quickly in dry beds, so it's important to keep the area shaded and mulched. A thin layer of moist leaf litter really works wonders. You should avoid digging or disturbing the fungal zone, since it spreads through these long underground threads that, honestly, are easily broken by tools or even just foot traffic. Just let it work in peace and, you know, it will transform your bed from the bottom up. So let's talk about the results you can expect, and when you should start looking for them. In as little as three to four weeks, you might notice the bed starting to feel a bit different. The once dense clay, well, it becomes noticeably softer underfoot, and, uh, earthworms begin to move in, drawn by all the increased fungal activity. Seedlings actually grow faster, and, you know, they're able to hold moisture for a longer period of time. By week six to eight, you'll notice a deep, rich humus forming where the fungal mat was placed, even without compost. This natural transformation, you know, really mimics the forest floor process, slow on the surface but incredibly active underground. The results compound over time. Once established, this fungal network can become self-sustaining as long as you feed it with carbon materials and prevent it from drying out. Raised beds that were once brick hard can turn into loose, thriving mini-ecosystems, with no tilling, no digging, and no synthetic inputs. Why this method matters more than ever. In an age of overcompacted soil, expensive inputs, and shallow-rooted gardening hacks, this method stands apart because it taps into what nature already perfected. In an age of overcompacted soil, expensive inputs, and shallow rooted gardening hacks, this method stands apart because it taps into what nature already perfected. You're not introducing a foreign microbe or lab grown solution, you're simply relocating a native decomposer into a bed that needs help. And it works silently, invisibly, and deeply. For gardeners battling dense clay, poor root growth, or compost that seems to do nothing, this firewood fungus might be the forgotten fix. It's free, local, and endlessly renewable if you learn how to collect it properly. Before you burn that log, look beneath it. So next time you see an old log in the corner of your yard or maybe stumble on a forgotten firewood pile, don't reach for the matchstick. Lift the log instead. You might just find the web of life waiting underneath, ready to turn your dead soil into a fungal-rich paradise. If you found this guide useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and share it with fellow gardeners. Hydrohaven is all about practical, low-effort gardening methods that actually restore soil, not just feed it. Let's bring the underground world back to life, one raised bed at a time.